All right, so we get asked a lot about our Ram 5500, how it performs pulling our fifth wheel, what it does for fuel mileage. So we are at this point about 5,500 miles into our 7,600 mile route this summer. So I thought I'd do a real quick update on a few things on the truck and hopefully you enjoy it. All right, well, in case you haven't seen any of our videos on the truck and fifth wheel in the past, this is a 2018 Ram 5500 with a Cummins engine, a ASIN transmission, a classy chassis hauler body body, hauler body body, yeah. And uh, we had them rip out our rear suspension and we put the Kelderman Air Ride on the back, which gives it a real nice ride. Um, along with this, we have the 52 gallon uh, stock tank underneath for fuel. And we have a 90 gallon auxiliary tank up above, so it gives us 142 gallons of fuel. Then we have a trailer saver air ride hitch for the back. And this thing pulls and drives like a dream. I think I might have forgot to mention, we're also running 489 gears in the rear end. That, the combination of the Cummins, the ASIN transmission, and the 489 gears gives what uh, Ram considers the max tow package. So we were figuring out what we were going to do for a fifth wheel. It was really important to me to stay within all the limits of the uh, specs on the truck. So one of the things that people don't normally think about is the rear axle weight rating. And that's one of the top two things that usually is over when you're running around with the fifth wheel. So to give you an idea for us, so our rear axle rating for this truck is 13,500 pounds. The pin weight on our fifth wheel is 5,340 pounds. So when I drop that fifth wheel on this truck, our rear axle weighs 12,020 pounds. So we still have a little cushion there, so I'm not too worried about that. And uh, that's the way it should be. All right, so let's get inside and take a look at what we have going on here. Now this is travel day. So slides and everything in on the coach. And we're getting ready to hook up the truck. So we're gonna come in here and take a quick peek. Let me fire it up. All right, so travel day. Here you go, that's my TST truck tire monitor system. I've had it turned on all morning, so I already know where the tire pressure is on the truck, or actually on the fifth wheel. I don't have this hooked up yet. When we, once we hook up, this is my backup camera cameras. I have cameras on both sides of the fifth wheel and on the back of the fifth wheel that show up through here. And of course, here is our GPS. All right, let's take a look here, see if you can see. Can you see in there? The bad angle, right there. 8.3 miles per gallon so far. All right, so as I mentioned, we're well into our 7,600 mile trip. Turn on some AC here. We're in Georgia, it's hot. So we're well into our 7,600 mile trip. We left uh, Arizona, went up through um, New Mexico, Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, up into Michigan, crossed over into New York, into New York Vermont, went up and did um, Maine, and then down through Pennsylvania and the Carolinas, and at the time of this video, we're sitting down in Georgia. So all that pulling. Now the miles on this, since we since we left Arizona, 99% of the time this truck has been running has been hooked up to the fifth wheel. The only time this truck has not been hooked up to the fifth wheel is if we happen to drive two or three to five miles to get fuel from a campground, come back, hook up, and take off on a travel day. So really less than, a, probably 100 miles maybe driven that it hasn't been towing. So that's 8.3 miles per gallon towing. All right, now here's a little something I wanted to show too. So we have the Kelderman Air Ride on this truck. So right now we're hitched up, but there's absolutely no weight on the truck. The front jacks are still down, no weight coming down on the truck. We're gonna, weigh, we're gonna measure where we are. So 36 and a half inches is where we are right now. Now I'm gonna take some weight and put it on the truck, see where we are. All right, we dropped all the weight onto the truck. The, the jacks are down just a little bit. You'll notice that because I'm getting ready to do my pull test. So they're up about an inch, but all the pin weight is on the truck. So let's measure and see how well we do. So 36 and a quarter is what that reads right now. 36 and a quarter. So a quarter inch drop after putting the 5,300 pounds of weight on the back of the truck with that Kelderman Air Ride. 
not too bad. All right, so we're all hooked up, ready to go. We have our destination put in our Garmin GPS. We got our tires being monitored. The phone lost connection with the truck GPS, so I have to work on that. And here's our um, camera system for the RV. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, I have it set up now. So my top view is from the rear camera. Then I have the driver's side. I can change sources. That's the driver's side and passenger side. Now I have driver's side, passenger side, and rear. Uh, drivers and passenger. You can change all the different ways you want to look at this. Driver's side, passenger side, rear, whatever suits your eye, you can change. Or you can go all, that's all passenger side, that's all rear, and that's all driver. <laughs> that's rear and, and driver. So you just do what you want to do on this system. I personally like the rear view there and driver and passenger. And then up here is our auxiliary fuel tank gauge. We have a little over half tank. That's our 90 gallon tank. And then we have, of course, our stock tank down over here. And as soon as the stock tank gets down to three quarter, the auxiliary tank automatically kicks in and fills up the main tank where we draw from to run down the road. We're set up in tow haul mode and my auxiliary is what turns on our camera system. Now we're on the road. All right, well, we finished up a short travel day, so I thought I'd finish up this video. But hey, we're still in Georgia. It's still hot, it's still humid. So let me jump inside the cab and we'll finish this up. All right, well, hopefully that AC is not too loud in the background, but dang, it is just flat, hot, and humid down here in Georgia. We're West Coast folks, we're not used to this. So we just got set up a new campground. I wanted to try and finish this video up and hopefully answer some of the questions that we've been asked over time. And of course, if, if there's any more questions you might have, feel free to leave them in the comments. I try to get back with everybody. So, one thing people ask is, what do the RPMs run when you're going down the highway? Well, okay, answer number one, I'm gonna put a little clip in this video right now. The other thing we get asked a lot about is the kind of RPM we run going down the road. So if you can tell right there, we're running at 65 mile per hour, and we're running just about, what, 60, or about 2,200 RPM, roughly. So 2,200 RPM, 65 mile per hour, and uh, running at this point like 8.3 a mile per gallon. So not too bad. All right, that clip shows you the RPMs that we run going down the freeway with our fifth wheel hooked up. That was on level ground. I think it was, what, 2,200 RPM at 65 mile per hour. That's pretty average. So that gives you an idea of how we do going down the freeway. Now, I did a video with this truck going down the freeway without the fifth wheel hooked up. And I'm going to try and put a link to that right up here in this video. I don't know where. I'm, I never get it right. But up here in this video somewhere, I'm going to put a link to that, to that video. And I think I took it on the freeway. I ran it up to, I don't remember. It's been a year ago since I did that. Um, 80 mile per hour, something like that. And it shows the RPM as we're going down the freeway running 80 or 85 mile per hour. So click on that link and go check that out. That will answer your questions as far as running down the freeway unloaded and what it does at freeway speeds. Then I get asked a lot, what do we do to service the truck to wart off any issues? Well, we've been fortunate. This truck has not caused me any grief. I haven't done anything special, right? I get on the Ram website they post what they recommend you do at what intervals. I do them at a little bit sooner in intervals, I guess, because 95% of the miles on this truck are while having the fifth wheel hooked up, so I work it hard. So, you know, it's regular oil changes, um, lubing the U-joints, lubing the drive shaft, um, oil filters, of course, fuel filters roughly every other oil change or every third oil change um, rotating your tires on a regular basis every other oil change or every third oil change um, i don't think there's a big thing other than those basic things 
Um, I think nothing comes up for RAM until 75,000 miles, and they want you to flush the cooling system, I think, which I haven't reached that stage yet. So I'm not big into flushing cooling systems, but we may anyway. And then I think the next big one is like 120,000 miles. They want you to replace the serpentine belt and do a transmission uh, fluid service and all that, which I'll probably do that a little sooner than 120,000 because, again, typically the miles that this truck gets is with the fifth wheel in the back. So we do work the truck hard. So I'll probably do that uh, transmission service a little sooner than that 120,000 miles. If we even get close to that in this truck, I don't know. We do seven, 8,000 miles a year towing in this, typically. Then I get asked, what problems do we have with this truck? Well, I hate to disappoint those people that expect me to say we have issues every time we hit the road, but knock on wood, this truck has just been a good, sound truck for us. Now again, when we researched this truck, we knew we was going to have a, a heavy fifth wheel in the back. So that's why we went the 489 gears, we went the ASIN transmission, and we did all the upgrades to have this capable of pulling a fifth wheel of that weight. We didn't go shy on anything, trying to be over our limits pulling fifth wheel down the road. We are actually within every single weight limit specified by RAM. I won't say substantially because our gross combined weight rating is right at the top, but everything else, our rear, our rear wheel axle rating, we're well under. Our front axle, of course, we're way under. Um, we are not overworking this truck. If we would have went with a 3500, put that fifth wheel back there, I'm sure my story may be a little bit different. But you know what? That's just the way I think. There are people out there towing with 3500s and they think they're just fine. But we wanted the bigger brakes with the 5500. We wanted the better turn radius with the 5500. We wanted the maximum tow rating we could do. The frame is heavier than the 5500. This is just me. I don't care what you do. I'm answering questions that get asked of me. We're no better than anybody else. We're doing what we feel is right and you do what you feel is right. But, if I'm going to mention something that has gone wrong with the truck, and this has happened twice now. So, on the rear end, there is a collar that goes around a shaft, and there is a linkage attached to that collar. And I had a screw come loose on that collar twice. When that screw come loose, it allowed the collar to rotate on the shaft, therefore dropping the linkage. And that lowered the height of the truck on one side of the, of the rear end. Now, that in itself isn't a big deal, but I'm pretty sure that if you ran too off a long like that, it would cause some unnecessary stress on the drive shaft or maybe something else. But it's an easy fix. I noticed it driving down the road. I got out. I could see it visually. So I just had to get a screwdriver out, and uh, I rotated that um, collar on that shaft, and I measured both sides to make sure they're the same height. And then I tightened things back down and it was good to go. But uh, when that screw loosens up and you get bouncing around down the road and that collar shifts just a little bit, that side of the truck lowers. And it's happened on the same collar, same side of the truck, both times. I could probably put some Loctite on that and take care of that 100%, but um, I just, I'm just aware of it. If it happens again, I know what to do. It's a, it's a five, I suppose, 10 minutes by the time I run back and forth measuring, make sure it's right to fix it. So no big deal, but that has gone wrong. Um, this isn't the truck, but I did have to replace the um, compressor on our hitch. The hitch would keep on lowering down if I sat overnight or two days or whatever, the hitch, the air would drop out of the hitch and it shouldn't do that. So um, there's a valve inside the compressor. We think it was leaking. So we put a whole new compressor on the hitch. So that was, that was something. Again, that's not the truck. So I'm sorry to all you guys out there, Ford guys, I'm just teasing, that I uh, think we need to have issues with the truck going down the road. This truck has just been really good for us. And I'm a Ford guy. I'm a Ford guy with a Ram saying I've had no issues. I'm happy that that's the case. So. I'm going to jump outside the truck. I'm going to show you that collar. I don't want to go out there because it's hot here in Georgia. 
But I'm going to show you that collar just, in, just so you're aware of it. And then uh, I'm going to close out this video. So I'm going to tell you right now. If you enjoy these videos at all, how about a thumbs up? Hit that subscribe button down below. Leave us a comment. Ask us any questions. Um, those thumbs up and questions help YouTube uh, realize people are paying attention to our videos and that helps the channel. So we still have another 2,500 miles left or so in this particular summer trip. At the end of this trip, I'll do another update on how the truck performed, on fuel mileage, and everything else. So you'll want to catch that too. All right. As always, have a great day. And we'll see you in the next video. All right, here you go. This is the collar I'm talking about. That's the screw that's come loose twice. It allows this collar to rotate which drops this linkage and this is all attached to the compressor on the rear end and adjust the height of the of the uh, of the rear end and this apparatus is on both sides of the truck so this could happen on either side